Look, greetings, intrepid viewers. Here's Dr. Lena coming to you a day after the passing of Elizabeth. Now, first up, as an individual, rest in peace. I sincerely, sincerely mean that. However, let's just take a minute to look at her reign and who she was and who she represents, okay? So her reign started just as the British Empire was falling apart, basically, because her ancestors for hundreds of years had spent a great deal of time, effort and cruelty beyond description to go around the world, steal lands from Indigenous people to subjugate a quarter of the world's population. But that was the dividing up of Africa, the enthusiasm for the slave trade, the deliberate starvation of two million Irish. And then they divided Ireland, the division of India. It was only 1947. We're not talking ancient history. It's lived history, 1947. Why? Because it was an administrative issue. We could just put all the Muslims here and all the Hindus and Sikhs here and it'll be neat and tidy. And what happened was at the time it was the biggest displacement of humans in history and people lost their lands, their livelihoods, their families, and they're still feeling it today. And then they went on to carve up the Middle East. They invented Iraq. Iraq was a social geopolitical construct of the Brits who then went on to support some Middle Eastern powers over others, then the Balfour Agreement, which didn't include the Palestinians. These are all issues that are destabilising the world today. And she is a direct part of that dynasty that goes way back that said peasants in their castle grounds would have to starve to death because they couldn't poach a rat or a deer or anything. It's actually a blood-soaked history that affects us now. Okay, so the fact that she went on what was really a very clever apology to her for the last 60 years, smiling at her subjects. That was her role, and she did her role really well, but I'm just taking a minute to point out there were other issues. And if you want to know what I really think, um, Hogarth, it might be a mistake, Hogarth, you've asked me on tomorrow when all these things are fresh. <laughs> so if you want to know more, tomorrow, which is... I think 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Hogarth's channel. Okay. So let's recalibrate. Moving back to the focus of everything in this particular time and space. So back to the USA. Now we had the... Schadenfreude, the absolute joy of watching Bannon in handcuffs. Doesn't he wear them well? Doesn't he look like he should be wearing handcuffs? You know. So he's still mouthing off. The problem for him is that his two co-conspirators have already pleaded guilty in the other case. So this is going nowhere. He can spin it out for another few hours, but really, oh. Dreadful, dreadful man. But we'll see that unfold. But that story is connected to something else I want to talk about today. Okay, so Bannon's been done for stealing money from Trump supporters to build the wall that was never built, piggy bank for them. But Cash Peters raised during the week. His last video is worth tracking down, people. I'll talk a bit more about it if I remember at the end. Thank you, Cash, for that video. So also the $180 million that was raised by the GOP and most of it's gone missing. Now, this isn't big donor money, 
right? The big donor money goes to directly to the PACs and gets distributed by the power of Mitch McConnell and other hideous people. This is the mums and dads donations for the GOP that go missing. Does two make a pattern? Small people give them small amounts of money that make, make big amounts of money and then they steal it. So I want to know, are these mum and dad supporters of these criminals, are, are they starting to get it or not really? Are they starting to get it? Really? Just where is that wall, Steve? But 180 million is not chicken feed. Yeah. I think Rick Scott was somehow involved in this. I don't know the fine print, but let's just see. I'm interested in whether these small investors are cranky or whether they don't believe it or what. Okay, come on down. And, of course, I'm using the new cards. These were designed by Sienna Rose and myself, Sienna Rose Metaphysical. Those are the backs, and we'll get to see the fronts. And I'm enjoying working with them, so let's see what they have to say about this. Is it changing a enough minds to make a difference. The world is big. Mm. Oh, two cards came out together. Look, I'm not without compassion because I might seem like a hard-nosed old troll often. However, I almost feel sorry for these people. Not quite, I just mean a generic compassion. Okay, the first card was the world. Meaning what? Meaning it involves a lot of people because it's not just Anglos that support this. If you look at the, ah, oh, these other groups, yeah, conservative thinking. So it, it tends to be a migrant pattern once you get established and um, do well in the new host country, you tend to become more conservative over time. So this is my card of the world, being the world. So a lot of people, it's also the end of the cycle, big cycle. I don't think they're happy. They didn't have a lot of money to, to start with. They gave it to the already wealthy for reasons best known to themselves. They were fooled by the Knight of Pentacles, and this was the Steve Bannons or the Rick Scotts or whoever actually did the nitty-gritty of deceiving them. This is the work of deceiving people out of their money. I'm getting, as an outcome card, heartbreak. I think they're a bit shocked. I think they might be a bit hurt. You're not going to get to all of them because they're impervious to logic they can't cope with a fact if it came and smacked them in the side of the head. Um, so they're beyond help. But there are a lot of people in the middle. Oh, I think that's a bit interesting. Because the thing is, even though a lot of this issue, of course, everywhere in the world is because people now, instead of everyone watching the news or one or two news, as we're now in these echo chambers, all of us, but you tend to still hear what's going on in the other echo chambers, a little, you know, hint of what's going on. And you couldn't fail to notice, excuse me, about Steve Bannon's arrest and things like that. So it must be filtering through somewhere. Sorry, I've got the hiccups. Now, um, some organisation, some sort of justice organisation has crunched the numbers with the membership lists of the Oath Keepers, 38,000 signed up members. And many hundreds were found to be cops, military or ex-military, and some elected officials. Why is anyone surprised by that? Of course they're going to be there. Anyway, they were surprised. 
Now, the thing about the Oath Keepers, yet another digression. Sorry, I'm on a roll this morning. Oath Keepers, that's their name. If they are serving as law enforcement or in the military or an elected official, they have to take the oath to defend the Constitution. And yet they call themselves the Oath Keepers when they've blatantly defied their oath. So that makes me think, what do they think their oath is? What oath do they think they're protecting? Because it actually isn't the Constitution. So let's have a look. What's going on? Look, these organisations attract working class men um, who feel their masculinity is being challenged. I don't know, you know. What's this thing? What do the oath keepers think their oath is about? Because it's not the conventional taking an oath to defend America. They think it is. But where's the disconnect? That's what I'm fishing for. Where's the disconnect? Let's have a look. Mm. Changing times. Yeah, this all comes back to feeling forgotten people. That's this whole story here, right? So in these new cards, the Six of Pentacles, it used to be the wealthy person giving, you know, a few pennies to the poor, and we modernised it. And so now it's this guy who's quite wealthy and... This is the black woman who served him his lunch and he's being really mean with the tip, basically. So as the signifier, it's still talking about wealth inequality. Okay. And underlying that, the Page of Pentacles, this is, we forget with Pentacles, even professional readers, we forget because it is about money and it is about earthly things and material things, but it's also about values. And so staring at these values, and I think they're getting their values, the older guard got their values from John Wayne and Clint Eastwood, and the younger ones are getting them from all these shoot 'em up things, right? The same energy involved. They feel their rights have been stolen. They don't get it. They don't understand it. It's too deep for them. It's easier to pick up a sword and kill anybody than it is to stop and figure it out. So it's like, to me, this is the Second Amendment. If you sat down 100 Oath Keepers and said, what? What do you know of the Constitution? What do you reckon their answers would be? I think 98 of those would be right to bear arms. And that would be the beginning and end, some knowledge of the Constitution, right? I'd bet money on it. Okay, so they're attracted by the macho stuff. And what's curious too, it's the same with the Proud Boys. These aren't all Anglo men. You know, you see the names of the head of them and there's Torinos and Hernandez and all the <laughs> So even though certain racist groups are down on Latinos, Hispanics, et cetera, et cetera, they will still join these groups to be accepted. This is all about masculinity, feeling hard done by and wanting to be accepted and feeling like America has turned its back on them. Now, the problem with this is, to a certain extent, I understand the emotion. The problem is who they blame. So instead of blaming Reagan, the saint, who got rid of manufacturing, you know, who downsized all the blue-collar industries, who sent everything offshore, 
who started the globalised economy, who's done everything to defang the working class, he's looked at in these saintly terms. They don't criticise Reagan. They don't criticise subsequent governments for doing that. They don't criticise their GOP elected representatives for leaving them in crushing poverty for five generations. No. They blame the drag queen down the road. Or they blame the young woman who happens to like sex and might have sex with more than one person before she gets married. She's the slut. She's the end of America. And so it goes on. This, it's lateral, what we call in sociology lateral violence. All right? It goes out because it doesn't go up. And now they're drunk with power. And so we'll see. That's why these court cases are very important because they've got to see more of their own going to jail for treason, insurrection, conspiracy to discourage them from actually joining but this is what happens when working men, largely men, let's face it, don't have jobs. They have no secure employment. So then it's very easy to shift into crime or into extreme right-wingism or anything, anything, because what makes you feel a man? It's your gun cabinet, right? When, in fact, when you look at the traditional industries, whether that was wharfies or steel workers or miners, they were proud of what they did. That's where their masculinity was rooted and centred and they were proud of providing for their families and they knew the bosses were ripping them off. They were crystal clear, but their masculinity was secure. All right. Feel free to respond in the comments, by the way. Okay. Now. There's a guy, speaking of all this, Cowboys for Trump. Cowboys for Trump. Like Trump would know what a horse looked like. I mean, are they mad? Cowboys for Trump? I don't know. Anyway, this guy, Griffin, um, he was a county commissioner of some sort. He's banned from future political office. Now, this is a really important case because law rests on precedence. So this is a really important case because it describes him as participating in an insurrection. So the language is important. So let's just see here. I'm not going to read on him because that's basically the story. I had something else juicy about that. Oh, yes, video has emerged of Georgia election officials actually ushering in the fake elector, people who do the slates, whatever the slates are, I don't understand. Right, so videos emerge, hard to argue with pictures. Right. Now let's have a look because that would be of interest to January 6th, but, of course, to Fani Willis. And so let's have a look what's going to happen with that video. What's going to be the video of? So this is corruption captured on camera. It's actually happening on film. Let's have a look. What will happen? What are the results of this video? What are the results of the video? All right. The Hermit, the Eight of Wands, the Seven of Wands, and the Six of Cups. Okay. So I think I might need an extra card for this when I come to that. Okay. So this isn't a difficult read. It was done in secret, but there's cameras everywhere, and even the Hermit has a lamp shining the light. Things were happening quickly. Boom, boom, boom. Texts, emails, phone calls. Get this done, get this done now. The speed of it all. Right. 
this is Lindsay Graham, this is the Jenny Thomases, this is the Mark Meadows, this is all of them feeding into this stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's under the guise pretending to defend democracy. Like we might be changing the vote and losing these votes over here and putting these votes here and disrupting the machines and misreporting the numbers, but we're doing it to save democracy. And that's because of this nostalgia card. Now, what is happening here? This is this back to the 50s card, and I don't quite understand why it's turning up here. So I'm going to get a couple of clarifiers. Okay. A couple of clarifiers. Okay. It's a six of cups. Oh, Ace of Swords and the Two of Cups. All right, I see. So this is this is a profound friendship or connection, people you trust. This is also people you trust. This is what I'm getting. If you're going to do a conspiratorial act, you have to find people you can trust. So... When all these people were organising this manically, you know, as the Yeti was kicking back, chugging the Coca-Cola or, um, dare I say, the Adder or whatever, whatever, do it, just do it. They had to quickly, very quickly, find people they could trust who they could convince that they were the good guys, right? But... Here comes the Eight of Swords, Ace of Swords. I think this could be the embodiment of Fanny Willis, actually, cutting through the crown, cutting through the BS. Hand of God card. They've got away with all this because legal stuff goes on in slow motion. But there's so many things, there's never a gap. So it's just this... Barrage, this is why you're all, I'm sure, so exhausted and wrung out and so forth, because this is relentless. Whatever side you're on, it's exhausting for them, it's exhausting for you guys, it's, it's exhausting. Okay. But here it comes. They will not get away with this. And the, the conversation was about the video. The video will be instrumental in this stuff. I'm loving it. Now, in good news, Bingham Young University um, was, I think they had some anti-LGBTQI um, action going on and other students, presumably straight students, arrived to protect the minority community. They surrounded them and protected them from the more dogmatic students who were saying things like there are no gays in heaven and like you've been there and you know. So that was a beautiful action and symbolically angels. So we've got to call in our angels, which brings me to Cash Peters again. Hi, Cash. Okay, so Cash said some time ago, nearer the midterms, i.e. about now, <laughs> we need to talk together as a community and decide where our light worker focus can best be used because it's, it's too much and it disperses the energy to try and cover every state and every sub-election, right? To maybe focus on eight or ten key states that will decide this election. And so um, I sent him a list I found on the net of the main eight or ten states. I'll be talking with him, with Dave Johnson. You guys are part of the discussion. So Cash has opened the floor. You can write to Cash with any particular ideas about this. 
And then there will be a time when we decide we're all going to focus at the same time on whatever shape that takes. Protection, luminosity, to raise the vibration of people voting in those states so those who are hanging in the middle actually get inspired to make a positive decision in the majority's best interest. So we're going to be talking in the next week or two about what it'll look like so you are part of that conversation. So jump on to Cash's last video. He will talk you through it too. And I hope you don't mind, Cash. I'm saying please leave a comment. If you live in one of those states or you have particular feelings about how it should look, that should be good. Now, um, what else is happening? That's sort of most of it for now. You can order your One World Tarot on Amazon. And just reminding you, we will be having two two-hour live streams for you guys where you'll be able to, there'll be five or six decks up for, you know, for gifts. And that'll be a lot of fun. I'll keep you in the loop. We'll let you know when that's going to be. So, but meanwhile, One World Tarot, it's moi and Sienna Rose. All right. Good luck. May the force be with you. Ciao.